When you're working on an academic project, probably 85% or more of the sources you use will come from the library. That is, they'll come from the library catalog or they'll come from academic databases. However, that still leaves a considerable chunk of resources that you'll have to go elsewhere to find. And that usually means the internet. And so that's what we're going to focus on in this video. We're going to look at how you can use Zotero to capture sources from different places around the internet. Here I'm going to show you several common types of resources that people usually need. Um, however, the sources that you find might be different, and so my advice is to look through this video and then begin playing on different sorts of websites to see how you can capture things and capture them correctly. Here you can see that I already have Firefox open, and I also have the Zotero window open as well to the half window view. And along the top of my web browser, you'll see that I've opened numerous tabs. All right. And all of these are examples of the kind of uh, web sources that you might bring into Zotero. So what we're going to do in this video is just march through them one by one. The process is pretty simple, so this video will move a little bit quicker than our previous videos. The first example is Amazon. Now, a lot of times you know what a book is, but you can't find it in a library catalog or in our library catalog. So a good place to look for it is on Amazon. And just like with the library catalog, Zotero will tell you that it can download the information of that book. So all you do is you click, and you can see that the information is right here. Another place where you might find sources that you want to use in a paper is on a, a website of a newspaper. Here I've just taken the example of the New York Times, but Zotero works with lots of other different newspapers. And again, you can see there's an icon. This time it's a little newspaper, and all you need to do is click on it. And Zotero will bring that information into your uh, collection. Now, one thing you should notice here, and this is an issue when you're collecting sources in Zotero from around the web, is that you need to be sure to double check all the information, make sure it's correct, and make sure that nothing's been left out. For example, here I can see that this article was published in the International Arts section, right? But when I go down to the Zotero entry, and we'll zoom in right here, you can see that there's nothing here in section. So if I need to have that information in my bibliographic uh, entry, I would need to enter it manually. So I would click here. I would type in International Arts. Hit Enter, and I'm good to go. Continuing on, another place where you might find uh, information that you'll need in a paper is on a blog. This is a blog that I really like. It's Academic Workflows on a Mac. It has you, gives you all sorts of tips on using your Mac for academic work. And again, you can see Zotero. I've selected one particular entry um, about email. And you can see that Zotero has given me an icon for a blog post. So I click, and there it is. It's just that simple. Moving on, let's go to Google Books. Again, when you search for things on the internet, Google often comes up. And you can see that here I have Critical Readings and Translation Studies, which is a book we have in our library. It's edited by Mona Baker. And Zotero has given me the icon, so I will just click and collect it into my database. Now, there's one thing I want you to notice, and again, we're going to zoom in, that here we do have Mona Baker's information, but here she's listed as the author when we know that Mona Baker is the editor of this book, not the author. So again, I need to make sure that the information imported into Zotero is correct, and then correct it if it's wrong. So the way you do that is you would click on this little triangle, and you would select Editor, and that's it. Actually, there's one more thing. You'll notice we have the publisher information, but we are missing the place, that is, the city where the publisher is located. And so we need to add that information. Here, I'll just type it in. I just happen to know that Rutledge is in New York and London. The other thing you might notice is that when you begin typing something in in one of these fields in Zotero, it will show you every option that you've already entered into your database, and that should make things move along a little bit quicker. Now, once I have this complete entry, I'm going to move to another side of Google where you might find sources, and that's in Google Scholars. Now, I've Googled myself, and I notice that uh, there are several things where I'm mentioned. And when you have several items on a page, again, you get the folder. 
and Zotero will let you select the one that you want and download it. Now there are two things I want you to notice here. First, if I go down to the item and I expand it, you'll notice that there's no PDF. And that's because unless you are in the academic database, you, uh, unless you have access to the academic database, it won't download the PDF for you. So sometimes Google Scholar has access to those PDFs and sometimes it doesn't. Usually it's always better to go to the database itself than to do it through Google Scholar. The second thing I want you to notice is this. If we scroll down and we go to Library Catalog, it says Google Scholar. Now, Library Catalog can, is the same category that Zotero uses for database. So if I had found this source in JSTOR, it would say JSTOR right here. Remember that Google Scholar is not a database in itself like Taylor Francis or JSTOR. It is an aggregator. That is to say, it searches all of those databases and then returns everything it finds in all of those databases. So if your citation style requires that you include the database name and you find a source on Google Scholar, having Google Scholar here is technically incorrect. You need to find the database in which the item is originally stored, whether it's JSTOR, Taylor Francis, uh, Bitra. And so generally what you'll need to do is follow up on the link and see where it's stored. In this case, it's in Project Muse. So what I can do is I can click here, select Project Muse, and hit Enter. The final type of source I want to show you is just a web page. That is, there's, it's, it's not a blog, it's not Amazon, it's not Google Scholar, it's not a newspaper, it's just a web page. And you can see here that there's no icon. But even if there's no icon, this might have information that would be useful to one of your projects. The solution for this is to go down here and click on this button. And what this button does is it creates, excuse me, it creates a snapshot of the website. So it collects a little bit of information and then it also, if I click here, takes a, a photo or an image of this website so you can access it at a later date. In fact, you don't even need to be connected to the internet. In this way, it'll always be in your own personal archive. The only thing you need to make sure you do is that usually the information here will be incorrect and you need to create, uh, you need to enter the correct information. In this case, I'm just going to scroll back. I can see that the title of this page is Useful Translation Tips. I can see the website title is all translations. There's no date or author, so I can't enter those. I just have the date that I accessed the website. So that's all the information. Of course, when you're dealing with websites, just say random websites on the internet, you need to be very careful. If it hasn't gone through a peer review process, if it's not from a reputable source, the information you use could be suspect. So again, you'll just want to exercise your best academic judgment when uh, browsing through the internet. So to sum up, even though you'll be getting most of your sources from academic databases and library catalogs, you can still use Zotero to capture things from Amazon.com, from newspaper websites, from blogs, from Google Books, from Google Scholar, and then just from random websites. If you see the icon, it means you can collect it. And if you don't see an icon, not everything is lost. You just need to click here and Zotero will get a snapshot for you and store it in your archive.